Hello everyone, this is the CRT Productions and this is going to be my upgrade to the Asus Tough Gaming F17 notebook. Now last time we took a look at this thing, I was trying it out of the box and it performs absolutely atrociously in games, um, thanks in big part, in, in biggest part, to having Windows 11 on it. Uh, we're going to take care of that and another big problem with it, which is that it only has one um, stick of RAM, one 8 gigabyte stick of RAM, which is barely enough just to run Windows 11. Windows 11 uses up to like 5 gigabytes of RAM just by itself, so 8 gigs is really not enough at this point uh, just to run Windows 11, um, If is assuming you do want to do something other than just boot Windows 11. So we have a Samsung SSD 980. I'm going to be installing in it and uh, installing Windows 10 on this SSD. And uh, I also have a kit of T-Force Zeus uh, DDR4 3200 MHz RAM. That's dual channel. This laptop, uh, as I mentioned, only had one stick of RAM. It's probably not very good RAM. And the SSD that uh, comes in it is an M.2 drive, but it's an, some cheap Intel drive. It's not a very good one. So. This is going to be a pretty uh, significant upgrade to it, as a matter of fact. The total cost of these was about $110, so it's not all that much extra money um, if you want to upgrade this thing. and That'll increase your performance quite a bit. You'll also need one of these suckers right here, my trusty Georgia Lottery um, USB drive, which I'll be putting the Windows 10 installation files on. And uh, it's going to be a good time. I'm going to try out after I have all these upgrades installed. I'm going to try out some video games on this thing after the upgrade and compare it. I probably won't even bother comparing it to what it was like before because I imagine it'll be uh, no comparison. So uh, let's get started, get this thing opened up. Um, did have to buy something especially to upgrade this thing. I finally got an iFixit kit. Yes, I finally got one, all right? You can stop yelling at me in the comments. Finally got one. I haven't had to get one because you have to have a little tool to open. I guess you could use something else, but I'd, I'd rather use the proper tools. Uh, that tool in question is, um, and this will be useful for you people watching this who own this laptop, you do need one of these things to stick in between the um, panels when you're trying to pry this thing open. It's one of these laptops that's really way over complicated to uh, open up so just uh, beware of that if you are planning on upgrading your own Asus Tough Gaming F17 notebook so um, all right let's get started All right, so I just like to point out that by design, one of the screws doesn't come out all the way. And uh, supposedly, this is the one you're supposed to start with. Um, so the way the screw is, it does lift. It, I can't really show this because it's so small, but it does lift a little tiny opening between the plastic and the base of the laptop. Such a silly design, but whatever. It is what it is. Let me get these little things out. Got to kind of ease them in there. You just kind of ease it, slide it through there like a credit card. You'll hear these little tiny plastic clips popping out. Yes, so we go down the side now. This side. There we go. It works. It works surprisingly. And um, I could probably rip it open now if I wanted to. Kind of feel like doing that, but I don't. I also don't feel like losing a thousand dollars. So let's see. I'll do it the right way, I guess. It's not what. Not something I'm known for doing, but. Sometimes I can do it. Nope, that that just kind of pops off, but uh, you do want to be careful with it because this plastic is thin. I've 
I've definitely felt thinner though. It's not too bad. Um, you're probably you're probably not going to break this. I'll I'll put it that way. You're probably not going to break this, um, but it is possible. So definitely be careful with it. All right. So here it is. The ram is right here under this little plastic sheet, which is kind of strange. You have to rip that off. There's the other dim slot, empty of course. Uh, and let me take a quick look at this. Let's see, I'll give you a little closer up view of that. There we go. There you go. The ram stick looks like it's been covered up. They covered up the stick with something that's cute. Okay, so that's supposed to be therm for uh, thermals. It's supposed to be a heat spreader. So it seems to just be in. This, no, there's nothing on that side of it, so let's leave that. I wanted to see what this was. It's a low quality stick of RAM, is what it is. It belongs in the trash. Oh, that's good. So there's this. There's the information sticker right there that's on the uh, stick of RAM. That, that, that is, of course, the sticky side of the sticker, though. Um, <laughs> so that's a predicament. Um, anyway, let's see. And the RAM modules are generic. There's no, there's no indication. There is a Samsung logo on the RAM itself. I'm not sure if that'll focus close enough right there in the corner where my finger is there's a Samsung not even a logo it's just written there um, but that's your RAM right there so I'll try to see if I can get this sticker off I don't know nah this uh, silver thing is like flex tape it's yeah, that's not coming off uh, so there's the sticker RAM um, whether or not you're going to be able to put that on eBay after you upgrade it, I don't know. I guess you can. Maybe somebody will just trust that it is what you say it is um, with no indication. But anyway, I'm not worried about that. Let's see. i got to find where I put the, the good RAM. All right, here we go. This is T-Force uh, Zeus DDR4 Gaming, the Invincible, the Invincible Lightning Bolt of Zeus. Um, Sealed in a plastic package like a little Debbie snack. That's weird. But whatever, let's uh, get this sucker open. Um, get that out of here. So, uh, yeah, this isn't the fanciest RAM in the world. I paid, I believe, around $55 for this. Alright, here's our RAM. What is this? Is this a case badge? Oh, please tell me it comes with a case badge. Yes! The RAM comes with a case badge. Brilliant. Oh, I'll be I'll definitely be sticking that somewhere. Alright, so how in the how in the world do you get this RAM out of this package? Alright then. Jeez. What in the world? I don't know how you're supposed to do that. I don't I don't think that was it, but is out. Let's see if I can do that again. It pops out like those pills that uh, pop out of the little... anyway. Alright, so we can look here and see. Um, so it'll focus on that. It has a warranty, one of those warranty labels. Um, so if you try to yeah, upgrade your, or not upgrade, but uh, upgrade the um, thermal paste on your CPU. And it's going to void your warranty, so that's yeah, pretty crappy, but what do you expect? So you can see the cooling system, though. It has a pretty sweet cooling system. Um, looks like it is three heat pipes, three copper heat pipes. It's not bad uh, for a laptop. So over here we have the second PCIe slot um, and then over here I guess is the first one it's of course covered up with plastic for some reason um, but I want to see what this thing is I'm probably just going to take this thing and like I'll just keep it I mean 
I don't know, I don't want it to be in the system. I'm just going to maybe think about it. I don't know why I'm going to do with this thing, to be honest. Let me take it out and see what it is. Alright, there's the wireless module. I was wondering where that was. It's underneath the SSD. It's like a, it's like a package of gum. Look at that. It's got a little heat um, spreader on the bottom of it, so I guess I need to reuse this. I tore it a little bit um, when I was pulling at it. But here's the SSD again. It's got this weird stuff on it, this silver stuff. You can see Intel there on the drive. Um, what is this exactly, though? No, not going to be able to see. Again, the sticker is pulled up with it. Never dealt with DDR4 laptop memory before. Um, made me think of some old, old laptop memory. This is 64 megabytes of SD RAM out of an old gateway laptop. Thought it'd be funny just to compare the two. If I can get them both in frame there, there they are. Look at that. Pretty cool. About the same size too. You can see that one's just a little bit a little bit smaller and the notice the notch in them is the exact same spot so I wonder, I wonder if I can install this in here um, here we go there's the first one put it in there and just push it down there it is get the next one here I believe it will go like that nope it goes like that we have both sides of it showing there, the gamer side there with the little Zeus um, sticker. But it's a laptop so you're not going to be able to see it. Anyway, there's the 980. Look at that. Beautiful. And it looks like it's not impossible to remove it from the package. Take note, T-Force. Team group, which is it? All right, let's install this in the first uh, NVMe slot. Carefully put it in there. All right, and let's not say things like that. There we go. Until it's all the way in. Oh my goodness! And stop saying things like that, please. Let's see. Now what do I do with that screw? There it is. All right, let's screw it in. Nice and upgraded. So now we got to get Windows 10 installed on this sucker and uh, install some games and test some games. I'm not going to do all that on camera. I'll install Windows 10. I'm probably going to just install the latest version of Windows 10 uh, rather than what I've done with this computer over here and installed Windows 10 1507. I'm probably just going to put the latest version on here. So it looks like if you did want to, once you uh, do want to service this thing as far as cleaning it and replacing thermal paste, it wouldn't be too hard. There's a bunch of screws to remove, but it uh, looks like there's four for the CPU and GPU here, and then there's a few for the CPU fan over here. But it's pretty straightforward. You just remove those. Looks like it would all just come out um, in one big chunk. Um, so that's good. I have seen some laptops where you have to remove other stuff. Um, I guess you probably also have to remove this fan here. Um, but again, that looks like it'd be pretty straightforward. It's just a bunch of screws you'd have to remove. Let's see how replacing this thing goes. Make sure I have it the right way. Then just kind of clamp it back in. There you go. And that's not going to come off. I mean, even if it didn't have any screws in it, um, that thing's on there pretty good. So, all right, my first oopsie of the video, and most likely not my last or my least, was um, I didn't put the little thing back on the SSD when I installed it. Um, it had the little thermal pad on the bottom of it, but the thermal pad was for the Wi-Fi card. So, I don't know. We'll see if that matters or not. Let's go ahead and turn the laptop on. Said so turn the laptop on. There we go. And uh, see if it recognizes all that new stuff. I 
There we go. We're in the BIOS. Um, the laptop, the battery's almost dead, so it might shut off in a second. But we see it does have the um, SSD 980 there. And uh, we've got 16,384 megabytes of RAM. That's very good, very much better than the, uh, wherever it went, the 64 megabyte RAM stick that I had before. Oh, all right, well, I've got it installed. There it is, Windows 10. I don't know if you can see that for all the glare on the screen. Let's see. We could uh, adjust the brightness. Hey, I can actually do that now. Uh, before, I could. Anyway, um, this is a couple days later, as you might can tell um, from what you just saw a moment ago. It's because I ran into some difficulty installing Windows 10, as you could probably imagine. So I'll go into a little bit of detail about what happened during my Windows 10 installation um, process. If you're not interested, as always, I have chapters on the video so you can skip to the next section if you're not interested. But anyway, um, immediately when I started the Windows 10 installation process, uh, I could not use the trackpad on the laptop. Uh, so I had to go through the entire process uh, using only the keyboard. Um, so that was fun, obviously. Um, even after I got the operating system installed, I still had to use the keyboard to navigate to Windows Update and tell it to, well, also connect to the internet, um, which it did not install drivers for the built-in Wi-Fi card manually, so I had to get uh, wherever it is, my little, one of those little tiny um, things that you plug into the USB port, and uh, it's a Wi-Fi, one of those Wi-Fi dongles, um, and install the driver for that on the computer so that I could then connect to the internet. Um, at the time I didn't have access to Ethernet so I had to do all of this silly stuff. Um, I mean it didn't have Ethernet drivers either so that would have been the same same deal. So um, anyway, <laughs> I then had to connect to the internet and then tell Windows Update manually install drivers and updates of course at the same time it wanted to install all the latest updates for Windows so uh, that was that took a few hours um, and yeah it wasn't uh, wasn't a whole lot of fun the next problem was that uh, it didn't recognize the SSD uh, it didn't have um, a driver for some reason for a storage driver not sure why not. Um, didn't, have, didn't have a supported storage driver for this system. I'm guessing it's because it's so new. Um, but yeah, there's a link to an article, help article somewhere that I found. I'll put it in the description. Um, and yeah, that was a uh, that was a little bit of a lifesaver right there. I couldn't have couldn't have done this without that link. So I'll put that in the description for anyone else out there that needs it. Um, and yeah, besides that, just things here and there. Um, again, beware of the latest version of Windows. I did install the latest version of Windows 10 on here, and it, it automatically does the whole Cortana thing, starts talking, the volume is at the maximum level, so that blasted out through throughout the night last night um, while I was installing it, which was nice, because um, this thing has pretty nice speakers on it. So, um, yeah, everybody heard that. That was nice. Just be aware of that stuff. Yeah, I couldn't install the driver for the storage, but it darn sure had drivers for the speakers. So anyway, well, uh, I was backing up some games on here. I'm going to transfer over, and uh, we'll try out a couple games, but I'm not going to go too deep into um, the benchmarks in this video. So we'll just take a look at a couple games and see that it's performing well. But I think it'll, I think it'll be doing pretty good now that we have a decent operating system on here. Alright, so as you can probably guess, we're going to start with Counter-Strike Source. We're going to automatically select. We're going to do always random guns. And we'll just see how it's running here. It's running at 290 FPS. This is on all maxed out settings. Which team am I on? Oh, okay. go. Very nice. Where's my pistol? There we are. 
And you can, as you can see, when you play Counter-Strike Source at a high frame rate, unlike what I'm used to, I'm actually pretty decent. When I say you, I mean me. I've noticed the frame rate is basically like just sitting at 288 specifically. It doesn't go any higher or lower than 288. So I think, I don't know, is it locked at 288? Is that the maximum FPS you can get in this game? Anyway, all right, so I've got the uh, OG CSGO pulled up, and it's got the stupid music playing. I'll just mute that real quick. But anyway, wanted to highlight uh, one of my points I wanted to make. Coming from Windows 11 on this laptop, a couple people mentioned this uh, weird graphics settings um, option. Ooh, that's bright. But anyway, um, yeah, you can see on Windows 10 on graphics settings, there's basically nothing here. Um, hardware, accelerated GPU scheduling, variable refresh rate, I'm not messing with any of that. Um, but on Windows 11 they were, so, they were saying that you have to add each uh, application that you want to take advantage of your graphics card, your discrete graphics card, individually through this menu. Uh, and I did that uh, with Windows 11, but it still didn't uh, help anything really. So, yeah, on Windows 10, as you can see, I've done nothing on this screen. And we'll go over to CSGO, and I'll just go ahead and make sure I have all of the graphics settings maxed out. Although, everything, auto's already put everything at the highest. I'll turn anti-aliasing or filtering and everything. That, and yeah. V-Sync, and that, yeah, okay, there you go. Apply that, now let's see. Most of the uh, most demanding maps in this game, probably these. I'll go for this one though, online. The full server people, let's see what kind of frame rate, frame rate we get in CSGO this time compared with last time where I was struggling to reach 100 FPS. This is Nuke, that's the perfect, that's the exact map that I was hoping it would go to. Nuke is a very demanding map. All right, well, I'll wait until uh, this round, the current round is over, and we'll take a look at how it is with me actually playing. And here we are. Good timing, all right. So it looks like we are getting about 150 FPS. Uh, I don't have any money, so I'm going to buy. But anyway, yeah, this is all maxed out settings. Keep that in mind. Got to remember what the default controls are. I, don't, I haven't copied my settings over to this game yet, but... Yeah, I just installed it. I'm about to get killed. Come on, gotta get something. There we go. See? Get a good computer. You're able to play the game properly. Get that gun there. Reload it. Let's see. What, ooh, okay, that's not good. There he is right there. Let's see what we can do here. Just go on through here. Our FPS is like 250 now that we're inside. Um, outside this map again is very demanding. There's a lot of stuff going on. Let's see, where are these guys? All right, bombs been planted. We're back outside. What's our FPS? It does go down when you're outside. Um, that's expected on this map. Oh yeah, we need to go here, don't we? That's not. Right. Forget about that. I don't play this map. All right. I don't know this map, to be honest. Oh, okay, they got him. Smaller the bomb off real quick. There you go. And never mind, I guess they're not gonna defuse. Oh, okay, I'm gonna leave before they say anything about that. Okay, so never mind what just happened on the screen. Um, CSGO runs very well on Windows 10. That's my point here. Alright, let's get out of that. And now uh, let's try something else. All right, so this is technically a, an RTX uh, demo. Just wanted to see what kind of FPS we got in this. This is the this is Quake 2 RTX. Um, we're getting around 40 FPS, and this is at maxed out settings, with ray tracing enabled, obviously, and and um, resolution scaling at 100 percent. And I don't know what in the world is going on here, but here we go. Oh. Um, 
this is running fine. It looks nice, I guess. Um, and yeah, this is just, I just threw this in because I wanted to do something, but I don't really own any good ray tracing games because I didn't have a ray tracing uh, capable system until now. So there you go. But it's uh, obviously running much better than it did with Windows 11. And um, thank you very much for watching. Hope if you own one of these laptops, you will do it a favor and put Windows uh, 10 back on it. And uh, yeah, there you are. Working good. Let's go back to CSGO and do some more trolling, I guess. All right. Thank you for watching and stay safe out there.